I've really been, have been wanting to do something like this, this kind of a video for a while. It may help some of you guys in your decision making because arguably, you know, intakes are not necessarily worth it. But here we go. Three, two, one. Guys, what's going on? Welcome back to the channel. Today, we have to pull the JLT intake off of the car, ditching the intake because we're making room for boost. Nobody, I don't think, has ever done this, at least not that I can really find. Um, so, of course, I'm going to make a video about it, and we're going to basically test IETs. I really am curious to know to the stock airbox temperatures versus an open element filter. For in the 2019 Mustang, we have mild bolt-ons. We have catalyst headers. We have the intake. Both run 93 and E85. We have 93 right now it doesn't matter uh, but i want to drive around and see if we can capture the differences in it because you know maybe that may or may not help you uh when you actually go to the track so that's what today's experiment is going to be all about let's go i'm excited i'm very curious and uh yeah without further ado fire the car up let's go yeah immediately it's saying 103 degrees temperature it's going to change once we actually start driving this car really been, have been wanting to do something like this this kind of a video for a while it may help some of you guys in your decision making because arguably you know intakes are not necessarily worth it uh, but i will say that if you're after that just that extra little bit if you've got to have it all you know, maybe you would want to invest in some kind of an aftermarket intake. The fastest that we've ever been uh, in this car was 11.2, and that was an ADCO, and the weather was nice and cool. We were racing a negative D8 at the end of the night. Car went 11.2 at 124. We ran Stang mode. Uh, both of us pretty much ran the same time, 60 foot. Everything was just about identical. But the interesting thing is, and both of us ran 11.2, but the interesting thing was that there was another awesome guy there. He has a YouTube channel, Boosted J. Anyway, Jermaine, we raced a car. I had pulled the seats out of my car, um, so we had a little bit of weight reduction there, maybe good for about 60, 70 pounds thereabout. Um, and we had a very close race. I will link the video above. It's definitely worth the watch because uh, he was full weight with less modification, and we ran the same times. It was it was so close. Both of us went 11.3. Um, it was it was incredible because he, again he's full weight. We had the same tires. Both of us 60 footed about the same. It was very very close. We ET'd about the same. Everything was just neck and neck. But the cool thing was that it was stock airbox. We were both in the 85. But that was his only real modification. Now, I think he may have had cat deletes, but I have long tube headers. So there's another question. Are headers really worth it? I think that they are. You might gain five to 10 extra horsepower, maybe even upwards of 15, if we're talking about exhaust, you know, between a cat delete and headers. But as far as intake, maybe five to 10 on top of a tune versus your stock air box. But IETs, you know, if they're soaring high at launch, are they gonna hurt you that much? At a certain degree, they will pull timing from the car. You're going to make less power. You're going, it's gonna be harder. Now, once you're moving, the IETs drop very quickly. So now I'm at a stoplight, and uh, I've got to peek around my GoPro. We're at 95 degrees is the 90, and climbing, 96. So my temperature on my car is saying 91. So there we can see about a five degree and it's probably going to drop here in just a second. Five degree difference. There it goes. Start to drop. Uh, difference between your inlet air, you know, over ambient. So that is healthy. That's where you want it to be. This is on the JLT intake right now. But we're going to go up here. We're going to find some traffic. I want to sit still in traffic and actually see how high it climbs. And we're going to come back to the garage. We're going to swap to the stock air box, put our new tune in, that adjusts for the, the difference in math there, the, the piping size, and then do this again real quick. All right, so traffic is actually light. So what we're gonna do is come up here to this random bank that's closed on a Sunday. We just sit still for a minute, and we're just gonna watch, and uh, we'll skip forward in the video just a little bit, but I am gonna put it in park, and we're just gonna sit here and watch the IATs climb 
It's uh, still 91 degrees. Now, the interesting thing is uh, we went to Florida. See, it's starting to rise now on the dash there. We went down to Florida uh, and had a little bit of a, a vacation. I was seeing in traffic, you know, IIT's on the dash, about 127 thereabout degrees very hot you know and other cars have them like the gt350s have them but interesting the 2020 shelby gt500 does not it's actually close so i don't know are we learning things is it beneficial i don't know um, but now we have 103 degrees on the dash and still going to climb if it's 104 so if we were to sit here for just a minute or two longer um let's let's just do that we're going to pause we're going to come back and see after a couple of minutes what it looks like It's 121 degrees Fahrenheit on the dash, just uh, sitting still for a couple of minutes like something similar you might do in a staging lane um, or in traffic. And by the time you go up and you do your run or if you're just, you know, aggressive driving through traffic or anything, well, not through traffic, but you said, you know what I'm saying, through the street, on the street, there we go. Keep it legal. Um, there we go. So 122, now we're gonna drive and see and watch this thing drop. See how long it takes to go down beneath 100 degrees um, or there close to ambient like we were before. So I imagine it's going to not take very long, but yeah, it's dropping pretty fast. Just pretend that you have high, high IETs at launch. How much is that going to hurt you? I don't know. Maybe it doesn't at all, um, unless you're north of 125 degrees 130 that would be really freaking hot i don't know but uh here we are at 100 degrees we've driven about one mile it's still 91 degrees outside right now and it's still dropping a little bit but all right so there we go now we're going to go back put the stock oem airbox on reflash the tune uh which still takes into consideration that i have catless headers and uh do this again very quickly and understand it might be kind of a lengthy video but this is it's science you can't rush it so anyway it's all good information hey guys if you're new to the channel you like stuff like this you know subscribe away all right real quick uh 96 degrees finally back to where we started uh it i'm tra traveling at about 60 mile an hour and i do have more of an open grill that may or may not help but it's taken me about three miles to go back down now it's at 95 so about three three and a half miles they're about to actually drive it back down to kind of where we were before just cruising around so but i have to show you that because if i don't you know that kind of ruins the video so there we have it okay there we have our jlt airbox so very very easy to take this thing back and forth between our stock parts over here so we're going to do that very very quickly and get back on the road but here we go three two one all right guys, there we go. Stock intake, we gotta load the other tune. We're gonna get back on the road and see what's what. All right, new file is loaded. Let the IAT settle back down. They're already dropping. So you wanna be as close to ambient, or maybe even if it's possible below uh, for optimal performance. We all know that. Uh, but the, you know, the big argument is like, is an intake worth it? And I think the answer still is gonna be yes. Uh, because if you want that extra little bit, you can certainly have it if you're willing to spend the money. But uh, just for science, still nights dropped to 90 degrees now. Earlier we were saying 91, that might go up. And uh, we're at 96, 97. So we're just going to cruise at the same speed, 60 mile an hour, and see what we see. But the big thing is, once we get to a stop, like stop and go traffic, I'm very interested to see how much the IITs are going to rise. So we are about just the same as we were before with the open air box. So we're 96, so it went back down. Now we're cruising about 58 to 60 mile an hour there. All right, same exact spot. Now it is 451 on the dash. We're just gonna sit for two minutes. Here we go. Okay, well, I actually let it go for four minutes and it never got above 102. 
Um, I'm honestly a little bit shocked. That's uh, that's pretty cool. I did punch it on the way over here before uh, we actually did this little experiment. And the car feels on 93 just as fast to me, seat of the pants. And I really wish that we could have gone to the dyno, but uh, again, you know, the, the, the tuner dyno operator was on vacation. So uh, anyway, but that would have been for a really neat video. So now we're about a 10th of a mile into our drive here and we're just going to monitor the ITs again, see how long it takes for them to drop. I imagine very quickly. This, as far as ITs, goes to show you, hopefully, that uh, your stock air box is very, very good. But if you want some extra power, definitely go with an open air box filter of some kind. It's they're definitely proven, I think, especially once it, you know the weather gets a little bit cooler. But um, it's interesting. It's it is interesting because I had my car versus Booster J's. We ran pretty much the same identical everything, and uh, he had so much less modification than me. Uh, we 60 footed the same, same tires, all that stuff. Remember, but. He had stock air box cat deletes. I had uh, catless headers, JLT intake, and we also had the same tuning company. But uh, here we are cruising about a half mile into it. We're still at 99 degrees, but very interesting. So we're just going to keep going and see what's what at about three, three and a half miles. All right, so we've met it about three and a half miles, the same as the first test. And we've got 97, I saw 96 earlier at about 60 mile an hour on the dash here, 96 now. And uh, so, yes, very consistent when you're moving with the open air box. And this is just a temporary thing. I'm only gonna keep my stock air box on the car for a little while until we actually get the blower, which we're still shopping for uh, in the mail. Should be hopefully here within the next month. I'm thinking, but I'm not really sure yet. All right, but that's going to wrap up this video, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed some of this real world testing. It doesn't really get any better than this uh, same day back to back, you know, results, uh, testing and all that. So um, if you guys are racing on the weekends, have fun, be safe above all. And uh, again, hopefully you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.